congratulations on your CBE. And really, this has become your life's work, hasn't it? I know you're always going to be so passionate about horse racing. Of course you are. But what you've done for cancer research has been so significant. Well, it's not just me. Um, you know, basically, I'm the name behind the trust. But um, the real success really goes to the people who've contributed to the Bob Champion Cancer Trust. You know, the award for me is for everybody being involved. And um, we've run so many functions. And um, as you said, we've raised over £15 million. We've got two research laboratories, one at the Royal Marston, and that's been going God knows how many years. Professor Colin Cooper heads that up now. And now we've got the uh, one at the Norwich Science Park, and that's a brand new one, well, three years old, and Professor Colin Cooper's moved up there to um, keep that going, and um, he's doing a terrific job. And uh, we are coming up with the goods, which is the main thing. It is so important. Of course, one of the big worries, Bob, over this pandemic has been the lack of people who have been seeking cancer checks. And I speak to a lot of cancer experts, including Professor Carol Sikora, who's one of uh, the regulars here on Tonight Live, who warn of a ticking cancer time bomb. What's your view on that? And do you feel like cancer has almost been at times uh, become, uh, hasn't become the top priority, I guess, of the NHS. A forgotten yeah. disease, I think. Um, mm. Yes, I'm really concerned about that because I think in, say, a year, two years' time, there's going to be an awful lot of, lot of deaths when people weren't able to get and see a doctor or get the treatment. And, um, you know, we're back two years and in my own um, self, I've just had a half a kidney out about um, six weeks ago. And um, I kept ringing my um, GP, couldn't get to see him. And then I rang about four times, still never saw the GP. But they got me an x-ray um, in the local hospital. And from there, um, you know, I had the um, half the kidney out. There was a tumour on it. Uh, thankfully, they got all of it, but I was just very fortunate. I think I just kept pushing it a little bit and um, got there in the end. But, um, you but know, a lot so of people... It's so shocking, isn't it? It's so shocking that you weren't immediately able to see your GP. And, Bob, I hear stories all the time of folks saying that the doctors were trying to make them take a picture of a growth on their body before they allowed them to come into the surgery. And I... I just think when it comes to cancer, you don't want to take a chance. Well, I didn't know I had cancer. You know, I had this terrible back pain and yeah. had a feeling. And um, it had been a long time there. And, um, you know, you just, everything's telephone calls. But you can't explain to a doctor what's wrong with you. Really, it's very hard. Mm. And, um, you know, they can't see you. They can't have a poke and um, have a look at you. And... Um, you know, hopefully um, the doctors' surgeries will start seeing a lot more people. And are you doing OK now, Bob? You say they've, they've got it all, they got rid of the tumour altogether? Yes, they have. Well, they say they have all the tests were good after. OK. The blood tests and everything. And um, hopefully, you know, I've got to go back in six months. Um, the operation has knocked me about an awful lot, I must admit, and... Um, you know, it was, it was a five-hour operation. And um, I'm about 95% fit again, which is the main thing. But um, it's been hard work, I must admit, but I've got there. Well, it must have been amazing to, to have that moment when the CBE was awarded this week. I was, you know. It was, it was from a Royal Highness Princess Anne. And, um, what did she know, say to you? Uh, well, I've met her a few times in my life and, um, you know, basically, um, you know, she loves horses and loves horse racing. So she's very easy to get on with, I must admit. Look, Bob, we've got loads of questions coming in from our viewers, so I want to get to them now. Lee, via okay. GP Views, asks, is it harder to get away with cheeky horse names nowadays? That's a good question, actually, because, you know, you used to be able to a little bit risque or, or make 
a little bit of a joke with the name of, of a horse, but we live in these politically correct times, Bob. Well, yeah, I think it is, actually, but, you know, you've got to get in touch with the Weatherbys and um, to get a horse's name, and there's so, been so many horses' names through the years, and it is hard um, to pick the right name, actually. You mm. you know, you go in with about five different options, and um, hopefully one of them's available, but, um, you know, you can't, as you say, with these times, you've got to be very particular what you've picked. Yeah. Laura on GB Views asks... What did you think of John Hurt's performance in the film Champions? Do you think his portrayal of yourself was a good one? Um, yes, I do, actually. Um, John was an absolute brilliant actor. Whatever film he was in, he used to put about 200% into it. And he's a great man. And um, we didn't talk a lot about um, the the film at all, you know, uh, when I was on the set, um, all we'd talk about was what was going to win today and so he could have a few bid on one. And um, <laughs> I think he might have been ahead after the film, but, um, you know, he was a great man and um, what an actor. And I was honoured, you know, to have him play me. And I can remember one day I said to him, um, God, John, you're making me out to be too nice. He said, well, if I portrayed... You as you really are. Nobody would watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> Rand via GB Views asks, how can the horse racing industry condone the huge number of thoroughbreds that are discarded when they don't make the grade? I ask as someone who has rescued ex racehorses thrown out by the industry. Um, the industry are doing the, a really good job in the ROR. Um, retired racehorses um, in competitions. In racing, we try to, you know, get homes for horses. Um, not all horses get them. Um, you know, basically some are very injured and, um, you know, you can't. But, um, you know, on the whole, racing does a good job. And Jennifer, final question, asked via GB Views. Would Cheltenham races have gone ahead if the Super Spreader Nike conference in Edinburgh had been made public by the SNP government? And it's fascinating. Loads of people, Bob, seem to blame Cheltenham for, for, the, for the spread of COVID-19, which I think is very, very unfair, isn't it? But, but what do you make of it? I think it's very unfair. I don't know how many cases came after Cheltenham, but it wanderings or anything... There might have been about 20 cases, I believe. And, um, you know, but there was it was spreading all over the country. I can't really blame Cheltenham. And um, Cheltenham is outdoors, let's be honest. Um, if you go to a football match, everything's so much more. 60,000 people in a football match, so enclosed. Um, Cheltenham races is over acres. And, um, you know, not everybody's pushed together. And... Um, as you can see, the photograph there. And, um, you know, Cheltenham did have a few people that got it, but I can't say um, they got it at Cheltenham. They most likely had it before they ever went exactly. to Cheltenham. Exactly. Exactly. I'm with you. Leave Cheltenham alone. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.